North Omaha History Podcast made possible by our patrons, Jay Hanna, Wanda Lewis, Ian Schneider, Lori Schwartz, Christine Gerber, Jody Lavallo, Jim Collison, Abby Hightoff, and the Great Plains Black History Museum, open Thursday through Saturday from 1 to 5 at 24th and Grant. Please go to patreon.com slash Omaha and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We'll give you a free gift. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. In 1930, 200 acres of land on the southwest corner of River Drive and Ponca Road were donated to the city of Omaha to become a park, and it was named after Joseph B. Hummel, the longtime superintendent of Omaha's Parks and Recreation Department, and uh, one of the most influential park advocates ever in Omaha. So, Adam, tell us more about Hummel Park. So, Steve, there's this picture of Hummel Park as some kind of crazy, far-out place where mysterious and strange and bad things happen. But in reality, it's another city park in Omaha, and it's beautiful. Growing up, my family used to go there all the time. We hiked all around the park. We slid down Devil's Slide. We had picnics over by the intersection of Ponca and River Road, where there's a beautiful picnic area and some historic markers. And, man, it was a heck of a place. So when I became so interested in North Omaha history and started doing my research more than a decade ago, uh, I dug up the story of Hummel Park almost immediately because I really wanted to know. It turns out that Hummel Park, you know, it it seats right there on the edge of the Ponca Hills, looking out over the Missouri River Valley. And it's just a gorgeous place covered with a beautiful deciduous forest, all kinds of oaks and maples and different kinds of trees and lots of rolling hills and different landscapes and uh, trails throughout the entire thing. There's different facilities that are there. It's a really fun place. Well, it turns out that the history of the place, though, it goes way back, all the way back 200 years ago when uh, there was a Spanish trader named Manuel Lisa who had a fort that was right by the park. And that fort, it, it wasn't an extravagant place. He employed maybe 30 or 40 people to work there. So it was big enough to have all those folks. And it wasn't a fort in terms of like a military base. It was a fur trading fort, kind of a gringy, grimy place that had all kinds of things going on, people coming in and out all the time. They arrived off the river. They got out of their canoes. They'd bring the fur over to the trading post right there and uh, make a deal with Manuel Lisa. Now, they included French trappers, Spanish trappers, and Native Americans. So lots of different people were coming and going all the time. The tribes that were served were all over the Midwest. They included the Winnebago and the Iowa, the Omaha, and even the Lakota came down to trade with Manuel Lisa. He was kind of a de facto American ambassador for all of these tribes, especially in uh, right at uh, 1812 when the the, uh, English and the states were at war. Um, They were trying to claim these tribes on either side, and Manuel Lisa played a really important role in keeping the tribes of the Americans. And that happened right there at Hummel Park. So it was an exciting place just to think about that long ago history. There was another fur post, fur trading post that was right nearby. But more importantly, came the day in 1930 when there was a donation of this land. And basically, the city of Omaha looked at 200 acres just above a new park that they'd started called Dodge Park. Uh, this, This one was immediately to the west and immediately to the north. And it had this great view, and the city knew that they'd be ignorant to turn it away. Well, they were named after Joe Hummel. And Joe Hummel was a good old boy. He was one of the Omaha uh, decision makers, you know, wheelers and dealers. But he was also the superintendent of uh, the Parks Department. And in that capacity, uh, Hummel did all kinds of things to promote the city's recreation, and they wanted to pay him back. So they named this particular park after him. The Hummel Park is a normal park in the middle of uh, kind of a rural setting that is exceptional to the rest of the parks in Omaha. There's not a secret lodge anywhere in the park, and there's no evidence that any lynching ever happened at Hummel Park. There's never never been an albino farm at Hummel Park either, or colonies of albinos or homeless albinos roaming through the woods. You know, these urban legends, they spring up all over the city, and they really have fun 
uh, I think people have had fun kind of propagating those urban legends and, you know, making young people feel like they're all real, but they're not. There's no satanic wor- altars for worshiping the devil at Hummel Park and animal sacrifices and, and ancient burial grounds and all kinds of stuff. It's just exaggeration. What has been true about the park, though, and, and it's a reality of all city parks to some extent, is that people have died there. People have been murdered there. There were uh, there have been all kinds of accidents on Devil's Slide. You know, it's a gigantic cliff, goes up a hundred and some feet, and the whole point of it's to run down as fast as you can. So somebody's going to get hurt on that thing. In the 1930s, uh, the Works Progress Administration, which was based down at Carter Lake, uh, they came to the park and they built up the infrastructure of the park. They built picnic shelters, they put in um, all kinds of different roadways, and they built a magnificent set of stairs. But I'll tell you, Steve, it seems like ever since those stairs were put in, people have been making up different rumors and myths about those. And one of them is that the number of stairs is always changing because it's a stairway to hell. When in reality, it's just a set of stone stairs and they fall apart. And so, of course, the number is going to change. If uh, there, there have been lots and lots of reports of all kinds of social events that have happened at Humboldt Park. In the 19, from the 1930s on, it was used as a picnic ground. Uh, for all kinds of people, there was an old scout camp there and families would go out and young people would go out and picnic there. One day, unfortunately, uh, there was an accident of a hay, uh, there was a hay ride that was going out to the park and there was an accident and somebody died during that. There was a ski slope at Hummel Park. Uh, the ski slope was kind of popular in the 40s and 50s and uh, there was all kinds of folks used to go down that and of course there were accidents associated with that. Uh, from the 1940s all the way through to present times, there's been a summer camp that happens at uh, Humble Park that the city puts on. And it's a fun summer camp. It's based in nature and has all kinds of great stories and stuff associated with it. And uh, some of the urban legends happen there. In 1936, there was a soldier uh, who was found buried at Humble Park. Apparently, the guy was wearing a Civil War era uh, uniform, and his gravesite overlooked the cliffs. And, and the Missouri River Valley. But it wasn't particularly macabre. It was a gravesite for an old soldier. What has happened, though, and uh, my friend Ryan Rowanfeld there in Omaha, uh, he's done some uncovering of this and wrote an article recently, and I've done some uncovering wrote, and written some other things. I have an article there on NorthOmahaHistory.com all about Hummel Park. I found that there actually have been murders, you know, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, there were different folks who were mur- murdered there. And even in 2006, a missing child's body was found at the park. But those murders, Steve, they go all the way back to the 30s. And it's a handful, less than a dozen, uh, just like has happened in every park in Omaha, including Elmwood, including Dodge Park, and including uh, the old Riverview Park. There's been all kinds of interesting things. So I think it's important to really understand the context for all of the good times that people have had at Hummel Park. You know, there's a really great book that's called The Legend of Humble Park by a guy named Jeremy Morong. And it is it is a really fun collection of stories all about Humble Park. But again, it's, it's not based in tragedy. It's not based in horror. It's just a set of stories that are really great to read and, and don't really uh, get into that macabre stuff too much. And these people who insist, you know, that the albinos live there and that the terrible murders happened and that all kinds of animal worshiping and stuff happened at Hummel Park, they aren't interested in history. They're interested in scaring people. And uh, it's a fun job for a park to have, but one that's unnecessary given that Hummel Park is becoming more and more popular with time for all the good things that it offers, as well as its wonderful history and its role in North Omaha's history itself. And that's the story of Hummel Park. The North Omaha History Podcast is available on your favorite podcatcher, including Stitcher, iTunes, and Podcast Republic, Google Play Music, and TuneIn. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.